Carl felt like he knew the doctor now. His belongings had spoken lengths about him. But what Carl had heard worried him. seen its share of gravel roads. Carl wasn't a mechanic, but he could easily tell that only the most heartfelt prayer would bring this old beater back from its slumber. With that cold, however, it was more likely that it would wait until next spring to wake up. With a homemade shooting range such as this, it wasn't hard to imagine a stray bullet ending its course inside the flesh of an unsuspecting passerby. Granted, Carl thought, there wasn't much in the way of passers-by around here. The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, and boiled cauliflower filled the air. Rock music invaded the minds of men even in the remotest of places. The man didn't own a turntable, though, so there's that going for him. Back then, in Africa and elsewhere, people were ready to take up arms to stand against the yoke of English imperialism. In Montreal, mailboxes were blown up, abductions were carried out, and violent manifestos were distributed to media outlets. But around here, in the great northernmost, all a man could do is curse out loud against the faraway evil and pray for the revolution to arise. That man, by any reckoning, was from that very stock. had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. The rag reeked of fermented vomit. Carl wondered how one could bear to live in such gross and horrid conditions. Carl figured this recipe wasn't meant to yield a refined nectar. Carl knew right away that the owner of this place wasn't a copper collector. No, this was a junk man's base of operations. The guy definitely seemed like quite the expert in scavenging scrap metal, with or without permission, surely. In the right hands, red metal could sell like hotcakes. At Jean Bluin, seems like that pig had a name after all.
Paul held in his hand some awful sugar alcohol. But rather than drink it, he told himself it could be useful. He only had to be wary. Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retentisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> ah, C'est encore bon. Tout ce qui est vieilli est bien meilleur. <rire> Si tu veux du linge chaud, parce que t'es habillé comme un gars de la ville, je dirais pas non à une bonne bouteille de caribou. Puis tu pigeras ce que tu voudras parmi mes guenilles. <rire> ah, quand on cherche, on trouve. Parce que je t'aime bien, Aster, je vais te dire quelque chose. Tu fais bien de prendre ma pénis. Parce que par là-bas, tu vas rencontrer le vrai froid. Un froid qui glace comme t'en as jamais connu dans ta vie. <rire> La belle pétarade. En 17 que c'était. Et le caiseux, il se souvient de moi avec ma belle carabine. Bang, bang, que je lui disais. Bang, bang, bang. Ah, le bon temps. Vois-tu le livre, là? C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Hé! Mmh. Touche pas à ça, l'enfant. Tu pourrais te faire mal. Ben oui, une couche. Tu peux-tu tout faire en même temps, toi? Hé, hey, la Corivo, Batèche. Ça te passe l'envie de te marier, la Corivo. À tuer tous ces maris. Squeak, les uns après les autres. Pas de pitié dans le mariage. Mon beau bonnet du bon temps. Puis ma ceinture, où ce que je glissais mon flasque, le monde tournait plus rond quand on s'habillait tout de même. Dans mon temps, c'était comme sur l'image. On était vrai, fier, fort, puis on avait le bon lieu de notre bord. Gadon, ça ouvre de la pantine. Prends là, je m'en fous. Faire ton temps dans mes déchets, tant que tu rapportes le caribou.
his cabin had been very generous to Carl. He couldn't have asked for more. Sometimes, and especially around here, people are so possessive with their land as a dog is with hydrants. was a motorless car. The mechanic sure had an odd way to go about repairing things. Another worrisome victim of this ice, this one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort to hide it. But Carl didn't know how to reach it. The week of October 5th, thought Carl. That was this week. The plug should have been here by now. indisputable fact that machines like this entailed a level of intellectual finesse that Carl was lacking. To all appearances, Carl concluded, the owner of the place had moved more essentials from his house inside the garage. Peculiar man indeed. Perhaps someone was 
was expecting an important call. In any case, that person's in for a long wait. Carl already noticed that telephone services weren't provided in this area. The man has a passion for intergalactic things. Back then, people were obviously scared of the Russian atomic bomb, but an invasion by extraterrestrials was a legit fear as well. Seems like the mechanic had made his choice. Roswell, Atamipec, same story. Large deserts conducive to extravagant follies. Carl deducted this was a map of the area. Were those pins pointing to places of interest? Weird stuff. Kind of a crossing between a colander and a hairdryer. What was it for? To play telepath? To protect against nuclear waves? If some daring person could manage to get their hands on the missing parts, Carl was willing to bet that the craft would have taken flight. Carl hadn't lived up to his good finder reputation. He still hadn't found any of the wealth contained in Lamotte's lands. By following the plan, Carl was led to believe that the snowmobile's parts had to be scattered about in the vicinity. bit of gas, a new spark plug, and the key, and this thing would run perfectly. All he needed to do now was to find all that. Carl had no idea how to interpret a message like that. On the surface, it seemed like he had one half too many of this puzzle. Enough to know he shouldn't take this testimony as possible. The entire thing, being some punishment for a murder committed by Hamilton, seemed like an outlandish theory. Carl was doubtful 